my 17 week bump date. I cannot believe we have made it this far in the pregnancy. Um, as far as symptoms go, pretty much everything is the same. I'm still vomiting. I'm still constantly nauseous. Um, I'm still having chest pain, which we discovered is from the fact that I have a concave chest. And so as everything is shifting around in there, my heart basically just doesn't have anywhere to go. So it's just all kind of being compressed. Um, I do still have tenderness in my abdomen and the sharp pains that I was describing in week 16, which are just round ligament pain. Um, I have had major swelling in my feet and ankles, um, very specifically the ankle that I had surgery on. So I might need to contact the orthopedic doctor um, to talk about that situation. Um, I have been very uncomfortable. I can't stay in the same position for too long. Um, you know, if I'm laying on my back, my chest will hurt. If I lay on my right side, my legs fall asleep. If I lay on my left side, my, you know, it just, one thing after another, just very, very uncomfortable, which is only going to get worse as time goes on. Um, this week I did have very low blood pressure. When I went in, it was 89 over 62 or something like that. They said it's very low. Um, and advised me to drink more fluids, which is not an easy task when you're constantly throwing them up, but I am trying. Um, I have noticed an increase in the frequency at which I urinate. Um, I don't pee very much when I do go, but I would say I'm in the bathroom every half hour to 45 minutes, um, and just without fail. And... Um, the dizziness has definitely continued. Um, as far as my weight goes, I'm up four, five and a half pounds from my pre-pregnancy weight. So I'm up to 107, um, which honestly, and I'm going to be candid here, I've never really had an issue with my weight, so to speak. Um, I've always been very small, very petite. Um, I married my husband at 90 pounds and I got pregnant at 100 pounds so I put on 10 pounds in the 19 months that it took us to get pregnant but um, watching the scale creep up and up and up is terrifying me and I know you know I know I have to gain weight I get it baby's growing you know and it's just the way of life but the fact is is that I've always had a very difficult time gaining weight and once I'm putting it on, now I'm freaking out about how am I going to get back to what I was before I had the baby. And it's just, it's scary to me. And, you know, I don't purposefully do anything to try and limit how much weight I've gained. Um, I don't really, you know, I eat when I'm hungry. And to be honest with you, I eat crap food all the time. Um, pretty much I live off of crackers and bread and pizza because those are the things that taste good um and the fact that most fruits and vegetables um turn my stomach very acidic doesn't help with the whole nausea thing so you know it's just something that i'm i'm taking in stride but it's difficult um and then this week the reason why i'm doing a birth plan is that i had my ob appointment this week and it seems like every time I go to the high-risk OB, the plans for when I go into labor change. Um, I am high-risk because I have a bleeding disorder, um, which basically causes excess bleeding. It's similar to hemophilia, but it's very different at the same time. Um, so when I originally got pregnant, we spoke to the hematologist who said that I would need... Um, at the very minimum, a DDVAP, which is um, an anti, well, it's a coagulant, but it's, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but, um, and possibly additional medications to get the bleeding under control when I have the baby. When you give birth, you have, you know, you bleed. Um, I have a very high risk of hemorrhage during the pregnancy. I'm a very high risk of hemorrhage during childbirth. 
So the original plan was to go into labor, when I go into labor, the earlier the better to get to the hospital because they need as much time to order the medications as they can get. Um, at the hospital, the pharmacy is not open 24 hours a day. So if I go into labor in the middle of the night, then, you know, they need time in the morning to get the medications ordered before I give birth. Um, if I go into labor during the day, then they have time, obviously. Um, but during especially the early stages of labor, I need to get to the hospital. Um, and then once I'm there, they would have numerous medications available in the room for when I give birth to help me stop bleeding. Um, it then changed <laughs> quite a bit. In the last appointment, um, the doctor told me I needed to go to the hematologist and discuss a plan for birth because they really didn't know what to do. And I basically lost my shit, guys. Not gonna lie. Um, I started crying. I started freaking out. And, you know, I asked why the plan keeps changing because the original plan that we had set was what I was the most comfortable with. So, the doctor, I've seen a different doctor in high risk every single time, um, which if I was to just see the regular midwives, I would see the same lady every time. So I don't know kind of why I keep seeing a different doctor each time. I'll probably have a different doctor every time I go, too. Um, but um, she left it at, we would go with the original plan and they would be calling down to the hematologist to ask them dosage information and all of that and stuff because I have needed the DDVAP in the past two surgeries. Um, so that prompted my need for a birth plan because I am so high risk and I have so many issues. I don't want one little thing falling through the cracks. My original birth plan, I was laughing, um, was going to be the plan was to get the baby out safely and to not let me die. That's still the plan, but now I want to make sure that they have the medications that they need and that, you know, they're doing everything that they need to be doing that we've discussed with the doctor because I'm not sure how much of it is getting transferred over week after week after week. So, I'm definitely going to be writing a birth plan now. Um, and that's, that's about it for week 17. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do from here on out, for reals, by, um, weekly bump dates with a live baby bump shot instead of the photos. And so I'm gonna do that now and I will um, be right back. So as you guys can probably tell, I do have a very noticeable bump, um, definitely larger than a lot of people that I'm friends with um, that are much further along in their pregnancies, uh, but you know, I'm small and <laughs> it's got to go somewhere. So I will talk to you guys in one week with my 18 week bump date. Bye.